Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and we got to talking about revolvers. And this friend wants to purchase a new revolver, and he didn't really know what he wanted. So I figured I would put a little video together going over some of the basics of revolvers. Single action, double action, double action only. What your philosophy of use is. Do you plan on just going to the range and plinking? Do you plan on carrying your revolver all the time for self-protection? Do you plan on taking it hunting for, I don't know, zebra? Or is it just something like me that you've always wanted a cowboy action gun, something that looks like a gun you got from a movie as a kid? And I'm not really here to make a recommendation on what's right for you to buy. The only thing I can say is, I'm going to present some data and let you make your own choice up. But what I can say definitively, the first thing you want to do before you go buy a revolver is figure out what your budget is. If you're comfortable paying $500 for a revolver, then you can look between the $550 to you know, $200 price range. If you're comfortable paying $1,000 for a revolver, your window is going to be a lot bigger for what you can actually purchase. If you're looking for a $200 to $300, $350 revol revolver, there are still a lot of good choices out there. So it really depends on, first off, what can you afford? Don't put yourself in the poorhouse to buy a firearm. Secondly, again, what is your philosophy of use? Do you plan on using this gun as a concealed carry option? Do you want to carry it with you all the time and not necessarily go and shoot it at the range a lot? but shoot it enough to be proficient and just mostly carry it. If that's your choice, then you might want to go with a more lightweight option like a featherweight Smith & Wesson or an aluminum frame revolver or even a polymer frame revolver like a Ruger LCR. But if you want something that has a hammer on it and you can still carry it and is a lightweight gun, there's options for that as well. If you want something that either has a shrouded hammer or a completely enclosed hammer, a double action only revolver, if you will. There's a lot of options for those as well. If you just want something to go to the range and target shoot with, you might want a little bit heavier gun with a longer barrel because you'll get better results out of that and it will be more enjoyable to shoot. So let's take a look at some of the revolvers I have and we'll discuss them a little bit one at a time. Mm. Starting off our lineup with a couple of single action only revolvers. These revolvers require you to load the round singly, which means one at a time, and cock the hammer for every single round that you fire. These are your more traditional classic cowboy action style guns where it's a little bit slower to shoot and reload these guns, but they are a lot of fun to shoot. And the fact that you have to singly cock the hammer and load these very slowly and eject the rounds one at a time really gives you a good feel for the gun. It teaches you good trigger discipline. It teaches you to slow down and aim your shots very well. And it teaches you good sight picture, sight alignment, trigger squeeze, and the other factors that are very important to learn when you're shooting any gun. So single action only. Not my first choice for self-defense, but these are fantastic range guns, and you can get them in just about any caliber you want. Both of these are made by Ruger. The left one is a Ruger Wrangler, and the blued model that I'm spinning the cylinder on is a single six convertible, and these range anywhere from 279 to about 650. Moving on to some more utilitarian handguns, and these are also made by Ruger. On the left here, we have a Ruger SP-101 in 22 long rifle, with a fiber optic front sight and an adjustable target rear sight. This is a reliable and fun plinker. In the middle here, we have a Ruger GP100 with a four inch barrel and a blued finish. This also has adjustable rear sights, and this gun I would trust with my life any day of the week. It's a six shot 357 Magnum, and it's built like a tank. Over here on the right, we have another Ruger SP101. This is a three inch barrel 357 Magnum, and this particular gun shoots phenomenal as well. I'm very good with the sights on this and with accuracy, 
And these guns range anywhere from 500 to about 800 $850 when you can find them in stores used. New at the moment, they might be even more than that. Next, we have a few examples of some more concealed carry type firearms. On the left here, we have a Ruger LCR, which is a polymer frame revolver that is a double action only, meaning it does not have an exposed hammer. In the middle here, we have a featherweight Smith & Wesson 637 model, which is an aluminum frame with a steel cylinder and barrel, and it has an exposed hammer, but it's a very lightweight handgun. And then over here on the right, we have another Ruger LCR, this one in 22 long rifle, again, with a double action only hammer that's internal to the gun. Any one of these, I would consider a great concealed carry option, whether you decide to pocket carry it or carry it in an inside the waistband holster, because they are very lightweight. You will not notice that they're on your hip all day and they all shoot very well. So they're reliable, which is the most key thing when you have a carry gun and they're lightweight. The prices on these vary. They're kind of all over the spectrum. The 637 you can still get sometimes used for around $350. The LCRs usually are in the $400 to $600 or $650 range. Moving on to what I probably consider my favorite carry gun category is the snub nose steel frame revolver. On the left here, I have a Charter Arms undercover. This one was made at the Stratford, Connecticut plant, and this one was made somewhere in the late 70s or early 80s. I've showcased this one before. I believe I paid between $250 and $300 for this gun, and it has been very reliable, and it's a great shooter. In the middle here, we have my Taurus Model 85 Classic, which I believe was made in the late 80s or early 90s. This has a nice squared off target wood grip on it, and it's a five shot 38 Special, just like the Smith & Wesson Model 36 that you see here. And this is a square butt model. This one again made in the 70s. These are all my favorite guns, even though they're a little bit heavier than your featherweight guns or your polymer frame guns. These are probably the most reliable and most durable handguns you can get for concealed carry in the revolver category. And these range again from about $250 or $300 up to about $500. And again, all three of these shoot 38 special standard pressure rounds. Moving on now to what is a little bit more expensive category. On the left here, I have a Smith & Wesson K-Frame. This is a Model 10, which is a six-shot 38 Special in a snub nose. This particular handgun was around $700 because it is a little bit rare. In the middle here, I have a Smith & Wesson 649, which is another J-Frame five-shot 38 Special plus P, but it is a stainless steel frame, and it has a completely shrouded hammer. On the right, this is a Colt Detective Special, which is kind of the pride of my Snubnose Revolver fleet. This is one I've talked about before. I really enjoy this gun, and it's the most expensive revolver that I've bought to date. That little Colt Detective Special ran about $900, and I had to do a lot of trading and saving to buy that gun. And again, this Model 649, is I'm zooming in on it just because it is such a gorgeous gun. I recently put those rosewood grips on it. But all three of these being over $600, $650 up to about $900 or $1,000 is what you're going to pay for them now. Prices keep going up, but these are fantastic pieces. Moving on now to what I would consider to be more range-friendly type revolvers. On the left here, I have my Smith & Wesson Military and Police. This is a 38 Special only, and this model was actually made in 1928. It is the precursor to the Smith & Wesson Model 10. It has fixed sights on it and shoots six rounds of 38 Special. If you recall, I got that one for a very good deal of $400. Moving on next to my 15-2, this is another K-Frame Smith & Wesson 38 Special 6-shot, just like the Military and Police. This one has target sights on it and a 4-inch barrel. I believe this one costs between $550 and $600. Moving on next to my Smith & Wesson Model 617, which is a 10-shot 22 long rifle revolver. This is built also on the K-Frame. It is a stainless steel model and has adjustable sights. That one cost 
right around $700 used. And last but not least, if you want something that is just cool and somewhat ridiculous, the Smith & Wesson Governor. This is a scandium frame revolver with a stainless steel cylinder and barrel. It holds six rounds of 45 Long Colt, 45 ACP, or 410 shot shells, and it is a thumper of a handgun. If you just want something that's big and goofy and fun to shoot, that's the gun for you. But they're also pretty expensive, running over $800. So I've shown various different options of revolvers from lightweight carry revolvers to steel carry revolvers, mid-size frame guns with six shots and all the way up into your K-frame target revolvers and your uh, larger caliber 410, 45 long coat revolvers as well. I know by no means this is a definitive example of all revolvers out there. This is just meant to give you an idea on what's out there relative price range, which prices are subject to change all the time. These are in my area at specific point in time, they will change consistently. So what I've been telling people, if you find a revolver that you pick up and you like, I would recommend buying it now. I hope I give you some idea on what types of revolvers are out there, what I like. Um, but again, the market is so fickle. Some of those guns that I bought, like the um, K-Frame Model 15 and the 617 have gone up $100 to $200 since I bought mine. That Smith & Wesson Military and Police that I found was a very good find at $400, but I've seen those consistently for a lot more than that recently. So again, it's one of those things, know your budget, budget money, set it aside, look for something that you want, and then try to find one maybe used, maybe new within your budget range and buy something that feels good in the hand has a good trigger, and has a good track record for being reliable. Thanks again for watching Cranky Gun Reviews. Make sure you support your two-way rights. God bless America. Get out there and shoot. And you remember, if somebody tells you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, you remind them that freedom is the greater good. Have a great day.